Hello again. Today, I'm going to talk to you about fasting. This is something I get asked about a lot. And no wonder people are confused because in a lot of places on the web and on YouTube, people get it wrong. <laughs> and so I'm going to try and simplify it and separate it. There are two sorts of fasting. So I'm going to be a bit black and white about this. The first type of fasting is time restricted fasting. So basically you knock off eating about six o'clock at night and you start again at 10 o'clock in the morning. And the idea basically is you're restricted to a, a window of let's say eight hours when you eat and that's it. And there's a lot of research on this because um, Ramadan, for example, is in a way time restricted fasting. So there's a lot of research been done around it. And what happens is if you actually knock off at six o'clock at night and come back in at 10 o'clock in the, the next morning, you are trying, I suppose, to consume about two thirds of the calories you normally do. There is research on men, healthy males, and if they do time restricted fasting, basically they do eat about 20 percent less. So that's the idea. And. What we know is when you go through this period of, of the fast overnight, you actually reduce your blood sugar. You reduce it by 30 to 50 percent. And in the morning, your fasting blood sugar, sugar should be much, much lower than it normally is. Secondly, you reduce your insulin in your body, which in turn will reduce inflammation in the body. And thirdly, you will actually achieve some weight loss. So it's actually quite funny because I've had a number of people say to me, I'm on the rainbow diet and I've lost so much weight. What can you do about it? Well, the rainbow diet is actually high fiber, but then it turns out that they're trying to do, um, they're time to, trying to do time restricted fasting as well. It's the, it's the time restricted fasting that loses your weight. So you're actually eating less calories, so you're losing weight. So that's the basic thing about it. Now, people ask me, can I exercise if I'm doing time-restricted fasting? Yes, you can. There is research with men, young men who go weightlifting, and there is they have no loss of power. They have no loss of muscle tone or muscle strength. So we know you can do it. So um, that's the those are the benefits of it. I will say, though, that some people in American studies, do actually try to cram the calories in while they're just doing the kind of eight hours they're allowed to eat. So there, there, are, um, there are some false readings out there. What we also know is that if you did it every day, let's say for a month or longer, you will reduce your cholesterol a bit. You bring your LDL down. There's a research study about 10% if you do it every night for a month. And there is more research where people went on for longer and reduced their bad cholesterol, their LDL, by about 35%. So you can have some significant benefits to heart health and, and so on, as well as controlling insulin and increasing your insulin sensitivity and overcoming the threat of diabetes and things like this. So there are benefits to this, but basically it's a weight loss program. Secondly, this one is much more interesting to people who've got cancer. This is intermittent fasting. And intermittent fasting is where you eat for five days and knock off for two, or you eat for 10 days and knock off for three, or in some cases, people eat for 25 days and try not to eat for five days where they're just perhaps um, doing water and that's it. They might do a dry fast where they don't do anything, but water is a good idea. So this is the sort of fast that a chap called Walter Longo at UCLA, I think um, he actually talks about. He's the longevity expert. And what we know is if you do a four or five day fast, after about 24 hours of fasting, several changes start to occur. Your brain produces sirtuin-1. So 24 hours after you start, your brain 
so produces sirtuin 1. And sirtuin 1 is an incredibly healthy hormone. It's the longevity hormone. And sirtuin 1 actually can even change gene function in your body. So sirtuin 1 is really important. And if you've got cancer, for example, and you're about to, having, to have chemo, sirtuin 1 actually shuts down your healthy cells because it doesn't want them to react badly to the fact there's no food around. So that's sirtuin 1. Really, really important. Secondly, after about 24 hours, your white cells that are poor, so the weak ones, they start to die off. And this is quite important so that if you like the level of good guys as a percentage goes up. Thirdly, after about 36 hours, you start to go into natural ketosis. So your healthy cells have to have some nourishment. So your body starts to break down fat because there's no sugar around now. So you're, you're now down at very, very low levels of blood sugar. And what happens is you go into natural ketosis and it's probably the quickest way of getting you into ketosis actually rather than forcing it. And this actually is associated with cellular repair. So this is actually bigger changes than in time restricted fasting. The other thing that happens is your HGH, your, your growth hormone, rockets because your body is trying to repair itself, preparing for the worst, but it's trying to make sure you actually are working really, really well. And again, just like in time-restricted fasting, because of the sugar, because the insulin goes down, your insulin sensitivity goes up. As you may or may not know, while some people have insulin problems and they're diabetic, about 70% of people in the Western world have poor insulin sensitivity. So now you're correcting it after about 36 hours. And also, this is very anti-inflammatory. By the time you get to 36 hours, you actually are releasing um, or reducing inflammation in your body. You're releasing anti-inflammatory compounds. So that's really what it's all about. And after four or five days, when you start to eat again, you start to make new good white cells. So you produce, you end up producing this whole good set of white cells in your body. So your immune system goes up. And on top of it, we know because the LDL in the same way as before, the LDL goes down over the five days, you actually improve your heart health, you actually produce, you improve your brain health, because you make something called BDNF, I think it is, which actually controls um, your, your brain health and corrects some things in your brain. And finally, it's very anti-aging, because sirtuin 1, as I said, is the anti-aging hormone. So this is what it's all about. So chewing one actually helps you in if you're having chemo. So we actually get a lot of people to try to fast on the sun, on the, on the night at six o'clock, a day and a half before they have their chemo. So if you're going to have your chemo on a Tuesday, you would actually start fasting at six o'clock on the Sunday night. Six o'clock Monday night, 24 hours on, you start producing sirtuin one, shuts down your healthy cells, there's no effect on cancer cells. And so when your IV chemo comes into the body, you actually get no um, pickup by the healthy cells or very little pickup by the healthy cells, more drug available for the cancer cells, win-win. You don't actually feel bad about from the drugs and you get more cancer cells killed and you come out of it at noon on the following day, the Wednesday. So that's that's how we use it in cancer. But basically, the other factor about cancer is why it's so interesting to people. Intermittent fasting, if you knock off for five days, by and large, progression of the cancer ceases during that time. And Volta Longo has done research with animals and a limited study with humans showing that actually 
in the animals, 30% of the cancers went away during the extended period of, period of fasting. I think it was about 13 to 15 days. I had it all on our website, and now it seems to have disappeared from the internet. So who knows? But that's what can happen. But Walter Longo, I remember it clearly he was saying that if you've had chemo, you get a less powerful reaction. You get less benefit. That's the problem. All right, so there you go. You've got time-restricted fasting, you've got intermittent fasting, and they're both pretty different. But most importantly, you do actually get some of the same benefits, lowered sugar, lowered insulin, good LDL, but you get many more benefits from actually going into intermittent fasting than you do from time-restricted. Okay, I hope that's clear. So I'll see you next time. Bye.